Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler again. So this afternoon we're going to be looking at something that is uh, somewhat of a concern. Uh, we, we look at climate signals a lot and we're going to be talking about a what appears to be a significant climate signal in the North Atlantic today. Just fair warning, a lot of this this analysis that I present will be firsthand. It it's it's it'll, it'll be an observational analysis and one that may run a bit ahead of scientific conclusions. So what I would like to say at first is that for any conclusions on the ultimate health of the Gulf Stream in the North Atlantic, I'd like to refer you to Dr. Stefan Ramstorff who is a leader in that field. Today, what I'm gonna be talking about is observational analysis. And so initial observ observational analysis and discussion based on that. This observational analysis itself is not meant to make any conclusions. It's just meant to point out what appears to be a concerning trend in the North Atlantic. So. At the comments section on my blog, one of our regular posters, uh, MLP from North Carolina, has been asking a lot about what's going on in the North Atlantic. So, so let's talk about that. What we're seeing in the North Atlantic right now is a very large pool of above average temperatures off the East Coast. And this pool is showing temperatures ranging from about one and a half degrees Celsius above average to four degrees Celsius above average in the center. And this is very high departures for the ocean surface. You also can you also see much higher sea surface temperature anomalies in the Gulf Stream to the north of this this warm pool area in the range of up to eight degrees Celsius above average. Now Above average temperatures in the Gulf Stream have been a, a mainstay of weather and climate features for at least the past three to four years. So the, the picture I'm looking at right now is the picture from May 19th, which is the most recent in the Earth Null School analysis. Looking back to November 16th of 2015, we find that this region of the North Atlantic, especially in the Gulf Stream, was also much warmer than normal. But there are a few elements to today's instance that, that, are, that are somewhat different than what we're seeing now. I'm going to talk about those. So the first thing that I'd like to highlight is that if the Gulf Stream is warmer than normal in this region off the US East Coast, it's an indication that the Gulf Stream itself is slowing down and that heat transfer is not moving as efficiently as it would into the as it as it usually would into the North Atlantic. And according to some of the science, we've seen the Gulf Stream slow down by about, well, I'm sorry, the North Atlantic circulation of which the Gulf Stream is a part slowed down by about 10 to 15 percent. And we've seen this warmth in the Gulf Stream year after year after year, which, an, which is an indication of Gulf Stream slowdown. Today, what we are seeing is uh, still that indication of Gulf Stream slowdown, but a very large pileup of warm water in the 35 degree latitude, north latitude zone. And there are just a few aspects of this pileup that I want to talk about. The first is that there's a relatively strong current of cold water coming in from Greenland. And it's usual that Greenland will produce a, a cold water current here in the North Atlantic. What's potentially not so usual is the intensity of this, this cold water current. So if you look up here near Baffin Bay, the, the speed of the cold water current is about 0.46 meters per second. And this, this speed is, is rather rapid and continues to be rather high on down as we approach the Gulf Stream up to 0.34 meters per second. 
And also in this cold water current, you'll notice that the, the anomalies are, are rather high in this region. And this, this cool pool here is one that has been tentatively associated with increasing rates of Greenland melt. And then historically, we've seen very high rates of Greenland melt since the early 2000s, very high in comparison with, with 20th century, but not quite as high as, as we would expect later on as Greenland begins to melt faster. And, and Greenland melt has featured, we'll look at the uh, NASA worldview here, has featured, well, as, as a result of, in, in, in many cases now, large influxes of icebergs from melting glaciers like Jakobshavn into Baffin Bay and subsequently into the North Atlantic, which, which provides a lot more fresh water, which, which tends to cool off this region more. Now, what we're seeing presently off the U.S. East Coast does appear to be due to this freshwater expulsion from Greenland and a related slowdown of North Atlantic Ocean circulation. And it has produced this, this very hot pool of water here. Now, as I was stating before, the, the cold water current speed is rather high. So let's compare it to, to 2015. So for this particular date in 2015, we see a, a little bit, you know, a bit slower cold water current, less intense. Cold water current uh, slows down a bit more as we approach the Gulf Stream here. And also, the intensity of the cool, cold water pool is not as high. So, so what we're seeing right now in the North Atlantic is, is, is a quite considerable dipole anomaly. And, and this, is, this is a bit of a concern because we would expect this from climate change as Greenland uh, tended to melt and, and release more icebergs into the North Atlantic. And, and this is the pattern that we see now. And not to put too fine a point of it, but, but this, this warm pool is, is pretty excessive. And in, not just in the um, Earth Null School analysis, if you look at NOAA, ES, ERSL, I mean ESRL, you see a very intense warm pool anomaly here juxtaposed by the cool pool. And also in the NCEP analysis, where you also see this very cool pool here and this warm pool here. Now, the, the, this is a signal that would be ind indicative of uh, slowdown of North Atlantic Ocean circulation. And as I said before, I'm not, I'm, I'm just presenting this as an observational analysis. I'm not making any definitive final claims with regards to the science. I'll leave that to the experts like Dr. Stefan Ramsdorf. But from the observational point of view, this looks rather concerning.